Hello everyone and welcome back to my first mon. It's Crystal Edition. I'm one of your hosts, Jack Martin, alongside the Pokemon Master, Christian Buckley. Hello, Jack. Um, you know, wanna know something hilarious? Sure. So we we started this recording like two minutes ago, right? And I led with talking about, oh, I'm this great Pokemon Master, right? I got the merch, and I have a crooked Pikachu painting. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I completely forgot between last week and this week to reset it and make straighten it out. We just talked about that and just restarted, and it, I still didn't fix it. <laughs> maybe next time, dude. Yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> Who could say? Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, but we were mentioning earlier about uh, Pokemon merchandise and mm -hmm. how you just, you know, talked about that being crooked. I, wanted, I was thinking about getting a little Squirtle or some sort of Pokemon mm -hmm. to put back here on my shelves. I think you should. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Pokemon Center seem like online seems to be the the way to go. They're like fairly cheap for like some smaller ones. Yeah, I haven't necessarily looked into that website specifically. I know, I I think that's a good quality because it is the official one. But yeah, I think it's worth it. You know, I feel ashamed. I feel like I should have more Pokemon merch for my faves because I only have some Pikachu stuff. Mm -hmm. And Pikachu, I love love him to death. But he's not in my top five, I don't think. Yeah, you gotta get some. You gotta mix it up a little. Maybe a Totodile. I know you like your Totodile. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'd love a Totodile. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to do a Cyndaquil by the end of this as well. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe he supersedes your Squirtle for you. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But uh, if you don't know, until last year, I never played a Pokemon game. So under Christian's guidance, I played through Pokemon Blue, while he played through Pokemon Red to jog his memory, and we documented that experience right here on this very podcast. For this season, however, we're both running through Pokemon Crystal, and each episode is going to focus on the lead-up to and through a particular gym. Mm -hmm. The show releases every Monday, and you can find it on podcast services like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and you can also find the video version on YouTube. And speaking of YouTube, Christian, mm -hmm. the JoyClicks channel is very close to that 2000 mark. Yeah. So... If you could very kindly go over and subscribe, that would make us some very happy boys. We would Absolutely. like that a lot. I think as of this morning, it's around 1,830. That's so close, dude. Yeah. And honestly... If I could do math in my head, that, mm -hmm. I would give you an exact number of how much we need. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it's a I little feel, under 200. I feel like it's realistic, because like, I think around this point... Or maybe like around June or July of last year, I think it was just around 100. Just 100 subs? Just 100 subs, I think so, yeah. Wow. Building that channel, Christian. Yeah. Well done. We're, we're, we're rolling, so. <laughs> um, uh, but while we're on the discussion about community involvement, mm -hmm. we want some more involvement on this show. So we're asking for submissions for fan art, uh, which you can send to myfirstmon at gmail.com. We had a great one by you, Christian, last week. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I've seen uh, yours for this week. It's, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's a little... Uh, so, I will... I'll say... I don't know if we want to talk about them while we're in the episode or just throw them at the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, mine is just... I, I do tracing. Like, I, I'm not... I don't freehand because I can't do that. So, I trace, right. like, what I can and then and then draw what else I can. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a little... It's a little ridiculous. So. <laughs> yeah, I like I'm excited it. to see yours. <laughs> Thank you. Me too. Um, uh, the channel also has a Patreon. Mm -hmm. and you can go over on patreon at the one dollar level and get early access to episodes they'll release every saturday so instead of monday you get them saturday some nice weekend content and at the two dollar level you can name my pokemon in my party which is just great fun so mm -hmm. go over there if you'd like to support us yeah uh but speaking of community involvement every week we did this in season one continuing it in season two but this time reading it on air we got corrections trainer yes, tips we do. so uh, first up, in response to your question about Magikarp last week from mm -hmm. TS Phoenix and Neon Rider Arya on YouTube and the JoyClicks Discord, Magikarp is truly like what you were thinking last week. Magikarp gets XP at a slower rate than other Pokemon. That's what I figured. Yeah. So. That's good to know. Thanks for that, uh, mm -hmm. suggestion, or for that, uh, you know. A little tip. Input. Yeah. And, uh, TS Phoenix also goes in to compare it to 
the level up rate of a typical legendary Pokemon. Hmm. Which is pretty really? interesting. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I never That's even super interesting. I never even noticed that really. I never noticed that legendary Pokemon level up at a lower rate. I always assumed it was because when you catch a legendary Pokemon, it's like level seventy. So Yeah. Obviously it's gonna take more time than my like level fifty starter that I have at that point, you know? Right. I feel like that probably goes hand in hand. Like it's already like super high leveled, so that's already slow, but I guess what they were saying it it also just slows that's just a slower rate, so Yeah. Oh well. Um and then from Angarl on YouTube. Uh, we got two hits here. First up, Scyther was rare in Gen 1, uh, and it was only available in the Safari Zone, so that's probably why you didn't come across it. I remember when we did our Safari Zone episode, it was mainly just you finding f- the the teeth for the Warden, right? Mm-hmm. You and popped it out. That's the only dude I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool. Yeah, and you also uh, missed Fly. <laughs> that was yeah, the... all right. <laughs> I did miss Fly, yeah. but I feel like that's not my fault. Yeah, I, I, I probably should have told you that, but I feel like... by Because we were recording two episodes a day at mm-hmm. that season, and I think you did that town first. So I was like, if I mention yeah. it, it's just going to be futile, and it's just going to piss you off, so I might as well not... <laughs> Yeah, so I guess I missed <laughs> I missed out on fly. Hopefully not this go around. Oh yeah, um, and then also from Angar, we have a breakdown of your team's types. So as mm, of last week, who you have, what their options are. So if you do want to take notes, because I know you were curious about some of these, mm-hmm. um, I can also send you to this after the show ends. Yep. So as of your current team, Geodude is ground and rock. Quilava is fire. Poliwag is water with the option for an evolution that goes water fighting. Mm. Bellsprout is grass and poison. Um, and then also, uh, I believe it was Neon Rider mentioned that the Leaf Stone to evolve into Weeping Bell is only available post game. So if that was something you planned on, maybe account for that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. But doesn't Bellsprout have two evolutions? Like, isn't Bellsprout at the smallest yeah oh right uh, yeah my mistake so weeping bell is the natural evolution and then victory bell is the one oh okay for the stone okay i see interesting so mm-hmm. i guess i didn't pick up on that um i mean maybe i did it on un- unconsciously in um gen one but i always thought like if you want to level up a pokemon with a stone that's the only way they can excuse me evolve that's the only way they can evolve but mm-hmm. i guess like there's certain iterations where you can evolve them and then also use the stone for the the next evolution so that's that's pretty cool it's mm-hmm. interesting it, it's it's like uh similar to this gen would be pichu evolves to pikachu and then you give him the stone to get raichu so oh okay yeah that makes sense uh for magikarp we got water and then gyarados obviously is water and flying yeah um and then wait he's not a dragon type no he has he can no. learn dragon type moves Eventually. Yeah. I don't know if Dragon was introduced in Gen 2 yet, but... Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or actually, I think it was, because Gen 1 had the... Uh, one of the... Dratini. Yeah. Um, Dratini! So, <laughs> if you're considering Wooper, you should be aware mm-hmm. that Wooper's type is ground and water, overlapping with both Geodude and Poliwag. It's not necessarily a bad thing, just something useful yeah. to know. That is useful because, Christian... Mm-hmm. Unless, are you done with, uh, that's are there for, any more corrections? That's it for training tips this week. Cool. Thank you very much for the tips. We'll get right into it because we have some new additions to the current party here. Well, let's sure. hear it. I added Wooper. Okay. And he's level five. Nice. I threw Dunsparce in there and I, I'm going to spoil it in this episode. Almost never use him. He's just kind of dead useless. Truth be told. Yeah. He yeah. like he does have a good defense. I remember you telling me that. But other than that, like he has rage. That's his move right now, which mm-hmm. is not very useful. So yeah, I I think honestly, if you want to keep Dunsparce around, I think Dunsparce's role, at least in the early stages of the game, would probably be what we talked about before of like your tank. So if you have mm-hmm. to swap someone out or heal someone, you throw Dunsparce in, um, and I think you could probably some listeners might hate this but i think you could probably give it like strength and like some of the rock smash stuff like that some of the hms yeah maybe i might do that that's actually a good point 
So it's um, it'll be useful at that point, you know, like useful for mm-hmm. utility and swapping. For sure. I still have Polywag in there, okay. but I will quickly discard of him. Uh, I'm just like keeping like higher level Pokemon just in case I need him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quilava, of course, is level 17 at this point. Bellsprout is a level 13. And of course, my Geodude, level 14. Mm-hmm. So as you remember, uh, just finish up the uh, gym with Leader Bugsy. Mm-hmm. And immediately, I like start going to Elix Forest. But before that, I can do that. Johnny comes and attacks me. God damn it. Yeah. This dude is, like, kind of relentless. Yeah. Even more so than Ash. Like, he kind of scares me, in a way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, he broke in. He stole Pokemon. You know? He's, like, he, a bad dude. He assaulted you. Mm-hmm. In broad daylight. Well, it was nighttime, I think, but still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not so, a fan of this guy. Yeah, what's Johnny um, rocking right now? So, he had a Ghastly. Okay. Sent out my Polywag and then my Geo dude. They took care of business. No real issue with Ghastly. But, oh boy. He threw out his Crocona. Am I saying yeah, that correctly? Yeah, Crocona. Th- that's probably what you have right now. Is that yeah, correct? I have a Crocona currently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This thing kind of wipes the floor with me. Interesting, because I faced Johnny again on my Crocona. For mm-hmm. me, it's Kyle. But um, Kyle had a Bayleaf, who What's is that? the evolved form of Chikorita. Oh. And I died. It was my first, I think, encounter of the game where I wiped out. Mm. Uh, because I should also clarify, because of my disdain for early hours of Gen 2, not having cool Gen 2 Pokemon, mm-hmm. I really only have been using my Croconaw Crusha because I love him. He's like a level 25 right now, and my closest follow-up is my level 11 Onyx that doesn't listen to me. So Wow. <laughs> Wait, why doesn't your Onyx listen to you? Because I got it from a trade. Like, it should listen to me now, but remember we talked mm. about how you needed badges to have Pokemon that you trade with to listen to your commands? Right. For the longest time, because I didn't have a badge yet when I got that trade... Uh, it didn't listen to me once it hit a certain level threshold, so I just never used it. Nah, uh, that's so. too bad. So you're mostly just rocking your Krakena. For pretty much right now, yeah. Like I have a Spinarak in the party. I have Togepi, but like, eh. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, this Krakena just like absolutely destroys me. One hit mm-hmm. uh, kills my Wooper. I won't say kill. One hit faints my Wooper. Mm. Um. Cool. Uh, excuse me. Bellsprout faint. Geodude faint. Poliwag faint i had to go back with quillava <laughs> who is obviously at a disadvantage and use um tackle to get rid of this dude gotcha so it was very dangerous uh, mm-hmm. then he threw it a zubat um and i got him with quillava pretty much no issue how do you how do you feel about uh closing the zubat in the fight funny can i tell a funny story about zubats recently christian please so uh last night uh, my family was <laughs> infested with some Zubats mm-hmm. in my family home. I can only imagine that the Zubats around my house have seen my first mom, Susan mm-hmm. 1, and know of my disdain for the Zubat mm-hmm. population. Uh, so they decided to wreak some havoc on my family, and I just won't have that. Yeah, you know, I I would believe it, but what if I told you that the evolution that Zubat and Golbat gained this generation is dope? Is it? Yeah, I like it a lot. It's kind of a lot of effort, but I really like it. So this is the third, like, highest evolution? Yes. Okay. You'll see it, I think you'll see it eventually. It's called Crobat. Crobat. It's really cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, Zubats are really not doing it for me. Not doing it for me. Um, but it's, it's not worth it. But. Yeah, no, I, don't, I wouldn't imagine. But uh, Johnny ends the fight after I beat him, and he's talking about his disdain and his hatred for the weak, mm-hmm. and it's really scary. I'm like, I don't <laughs> want to talk to you anymore, man. Yeah, dude. I don't want to battle you. Yeah. What's the deal with this dude? What's wrong I, with him? I think there might be some, uh, like, repressed anger. You know, mm. um. I think it's implied that your arrival is around your age, so maybe family issues, perhaps. Mm, um, possible. Johnny 
seemed interested in Team Rocket too, right? Like, do you think he idolizes them maybe? So I'm starting to develop a new theory as to who this man is. Okay, let's hear it. Because I think, I think this is someone from Gen 1. Okay. And originally I thought it was me. I thought it was Red. Mm-hmm. Because of the descriptor of his red hair. Yes. Now I'm beginning to think that it might be Ash. Okay. And I say that because Ash, by the end of that game, had tried to be the hero of his own story. Mm-hmm. And he failed. He is this failure to his... Uh, is it grandfather? Was it grandfather? Yes. Professor Oak? To his grandfather, to his whole family, to the entire world. He beat the Elite Four, and then I came in, and I swept the rug right under him. Mm-hmm. So I think he is feeling dejected, right? And he doesn't want to be around anyone because he feels like this utter failure. So he goes to Johto, yeah, right, to seek new fortune. Maybe, yeah. He he just said he hates the weak. He hates weak Pokemon. He has a yeah. completely new team now. You know, he was scouting Elm's lab for a new strong partner. Like, screw his uh, Venusaur, right? Like, he mm. lost. Yeah, it's very possible that this is Ash. Maybe, yeah. We'll see what happens, because that's, Which that's is an cool. interesting theory, Jack. <laughs> I hope I'm not setting myself up for a disappointment. Because, I like, this are. is. Okay, good. This is one of um, those things where I went into Night of the Old Republic earlier this year, and I was like, well, I know there's a spoiler, mm-hmm. so I'm looking for one. Yeah. And I, like, started developing theories and stuff. And I'm doing the same with this game, mm-hmm. um, but from your the way you just described it, uh, doesn't seem like I am setting myself up for disappointment. So I'm excited to find out who this character is because I feel yeah. like it's probably someone I know already. But we defeat him. Nice. And uh, I decided to give Wooper the Everstone per your suggestion. Okay. Uh, yeah. So in the comments, I did see some fondness for Quagsire. <laughs> but like and honestly I, I was thinking about it last week i was like you know what i feel like because of how much i really love how dopey slowpoke is i should probably love quagsire mm. um so i don't think it's a bad idea but i recommend maybe looking up quagsire if you're really okay. curious because i just could have a weird opinion on this thing I think Wooper is just the cutest Pokemon I've ever seen. It is. It really is. So, like, I feel like keeping it, you're not going to regret that, but mm-hmm. the option's there. Yeah. Um, but then I transitioned to Elix Forest. Mm-hmm. What do you think and of this? So, I was curious because every gym that I've faced before, immediately after, I get the HM, right? Mm-hmm. And... Before I even faced Johnny, I was like, oh, where's Cut? Like, I just learned that last week, right. and I didn't have it. So I go up to this dude who's in the forest, and he's like, oh, yeah, I want to get through this tree. It's in my way. I want to use my Farfetch, but he ran away from me. Mm-hmm. So I go catch his Farfetch for him, or, like, just lure him back to uh, this dude. And then he's like, oh, thanks. And then I talk to his boss that's next to him, and he's like, oh, here's the HM. And I was like, why did this random dude in the forest give me in hm do you have any insight into that like why is it why was it set up so like i think it's just an instance of introducing an hm through a side quest quote unquote again because mm-hmm. um, if you remember gen one you get cut from going on the ssn fighting the trainers getting up to the captain and getting it by mm-hmm. rubbing his back you know yeah so i think it's and really strength just is also in safari zone right yes I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe, I think you got it from giving the warden his teeth. Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah, I, I think that's just another instance of this. Um, not necessarily padding, you know, but, like, let's just make a fun scenario that's unique from other stuff we've done so far and give him cut. Yeah. But, that's a good point. I guess I forgot that you can get HMs from other means. Yeah. So... What do you think of this area? Are there any Pokemon that like stand out to you here? New ones? Um, I don't think any new ones that stand out to me. I catch a uh, Paris cool. to give it cut because the only Pokemon I had in my party that could learn it was Bellsprout. Mm. And Bellsprout already has Flash going. And I'm like, I don't really want to use two HMs on 
one of my main Pokemon. So yeah, we we caught a uh, Pokemon just for some HM purposes. Nice. Um, yeah. Did you run into an NPC in Azalea Town that mentioned something about the forest? Not that I recall. W- were they talking about the protector of the forest? Yes, I believe they called the sp- the guardian spirit of mm. Illux Forest. A lot of people were talking about that on my way to the the end of okay Illux Forest. What's the deal with this? I didn't I didn't see this to its conclusion. Right, uh, you're not meant to, but okay. where does your head go when you think of guardian spirit of a forest in the world of Pokemon? Like, what are you picturing? What are you imagining? Is it a tall tale is it actually tied to something is this another instance of pocket dimensions like what what's your read on this uh princess mononoke <laughs> okay that's what i think um mm-hmm. but no i think it's probably some sort of uh pokemon that resides in the forest i mm-hmm. and i don't really know what that would be okay. um I, I i was considering like going around a little bit more and trying to find out some more information but it seemed like there wasn't that much to do mm-hmm. so I, I didn't I, uh catch anything yeah i don't believe there's anything for you to see right now and okay. as far as i'm aware because again gen 2 is not my thing i think in gold and silver there was meant to be something in here eventually mm. and it was i think it got cut but i believe it might be in crystal so i will research that before next week and get back to you on that okay cool yeah i mean that'd be interesting mm-hmm but yeah, we didn't get much on that. But I did run into someone in there, and he had headbutt, and he gave. I think it was a TM, and he gave it to me, and I okay. gave it to Wooper. Nice. And it's a pretty good normal move. Jack, headbutt is great. You know why? Why is that? Headbutt can be used in the overworld to get my second favorite Pokemon of all time. Okay, let's talk about this now. I know I can use it against trees. Yes. And I did that, but so who? can you get with headbutt heracross <laughs> describe heracross is a probably like three to four foot tall beetle with mm-hmm. one of the the horns you know like a horned beetle with like the long uh horn with like the butterfly effect on it you can see these in animal crossing sometimes yep it's like it's that it's that it's a blue beetle with a big horn and it is great. I love Heracross. Awesome. And then this is a bug type then? Yeah, bug type. And I believe I think it's bug fighting. So. Oh, that would have come in handy mm-hmm. this episode. Yeah. Can you get this in Ilex Forest? I believe you can. I think it's a it's a rare spawn, but you know the the like the Christmas tree looking things that you can use headbutt on? Yeah. It, it's in one of those. So you could grind those trees, you know. I had, didn't have time to look for a Heracross, but as soon as I edit this episode, I'm going back to find a Heracross for my team. Nice. So I also got Sweet Scent. What's the deal with this? I didn't use it. So I believe Sweet Scent is a move. I, I never use it, but it basically puts a kind of a spell on the Pokemon you're fighting, and they will be... Re- hesitant to attack you they could still attack you but they're more inclined to not attack you because they're like intoxicated by the sweet scent oh i see so doesn't seem like a move i'd use yeah so honestly i just kind of move on from there yeah there's this... i didn't spend too much time in Ilex forest yeah there's not much there's a cool mystery right i'm sure you got that vibe from it yeah but... yeah so this is the second time in gen 2 i've encountered a mystery and it doesn't really have a payoff at least yet Mm -hmm. so yeah i was kind of left feeling sort of you know intrigued by this but also at the same time i was like well when you go through video games i feel and like you are presented with something usually you can see that out like kind of immediately right or over time like and you know what's going to happen but with with those two with the runes of alf and with elix forest i feel like i didn't really get that satisfying conclusion maybe that comes later so i was a little somewhat disappointed mm -hmm. we didn't get corrections about the ruins of alf being actually a big deal from the people that like watch the show and know better than me about gen 2 so i'm assuming it is genuinely nothing um but i can tell you that i'm like 99 percent sure something comes back with ilix forest okay 
So, um, and is this that you don't, or you remember that from like your day back in the day, or yes, just, okay, because I know for a fact it's in the remakes of Gold and Silver, and I believe because there was the extra time for Crystal, it made it into Crystal. Nice. Um, but one thing I did want to add uh, before we bury the ruins of Alf forever. Um, <laughs> There was a film called Pokemon the Movie 3000, I think, and it was the third Pokemon feature film. Right. And the unknown played a very large role in that movie, and they were really yeah, they were basically just a swarm that like interfered with the main characters, and um, I remember it was super weird because it, it's. They were like 3D rendered in the anime hand drawn film. Like it was super strange and it stood out. Yeah. And it never made a ton of sense, but that's the only lore tie I have to the unknown. So That's so funny. Yeah, 3D animate animated things in like 2D animated shows or in movies always stands out as like so weird. Yeah. So that that's very it's a very interesting choice. And mm-hmm. yeah, the unknown. I I would have not have imagined that they would come back in any way shape or form yeah <laughs> so so interesting mm-hmm. uh but make my way to route 34 and this is the first instance where i'm seeing some gen 2 characters that i'm like or pokemon that are like wow you are weird we got a snubble <laughs> snubble yeah okay which is like a dog looking thing mm-hmm. fighting fairy one of those two uh, Not fighting. i think it, I think it might be normal mm-hmm also, I wrote down Hophip. I don't remember what this thing looks like. Hophip. Hophip is a little pink ball with, uh, like, grass pigtails. Is that, like, in the Oddish family? It, it fills that role, kind of. Okay. You know? But it's not in that uh, evolution line. No. No. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I learned Slam for Wooper. Okay, Slam's pretty good. It deals a lot of damage. It's a good good move it misses more often than Mm -hmm. like a headbutt does which is okay um also daycare is here on this route yeah there you go that's the introduction Mm -hmm. i don't mess around with it right now Mm -hmm. but by the end and I'll, i'll just describe what i do with daycare by the end um i'm not doing it right now this is by the end after the gym um i'm giving two Pokemon at a time. I'm not trying to breed. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving two Pokemon at a time, and I counted the steps, like, from the from daycare to uh, Goldenrod, and it was, like, 50 steps. So I was, like, 50, 100, because they evolve or they level up per one step you take, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, like, one XP per step. So I'm, like, all right, 50, 100, and I go all the way up to 1,000, and then they'd be leveled up a few levels, and then I would take them. Wait, you actually did that? Yeah, oh but, my God. <laughs> but, so I was listening to podcasts to pass the time, Okay, but okay. I was using a bike, a bicycle, so like it was quick, mm-hmm. it'd be like five or ten minutes. Is there a proper way to use the daycare? Because it sounds like I just astounded you with that. Uh, Jack, let me tell you, I messed around in Sword and Shield with the daycare and breeding for just better stats because I was corrupted mm-hmm. by the stat people, and... Mm. I did the exact same thing. I went to the daycare, left a, a ditto and the Pokemon I wanted an egg of in the daycare, got on the bike, zip, zap, zip, zap, zip, zap across the wild area like three times. By the time I went back, it's like, oh, we have an egg. Zip, zap, zip, zap, zip, zap. Oh, it hatched. What's his stats? Go to the next egg. Bip, 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 bip. Like, that's how you That's how you do it. Cool. So, Good they got me. it naturally. Sure. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and I, I'll get to the descriptors of what Pokemon I was doing that with later. But that was essentially what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, I think I gave them Dunsparce because I was like, I don't really use you, so I'm just gonna pawn you off on these old people who take care of these Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't give me the egg yet, uh, but I'll get that later. Okay, w- worth mentioning. But I work my way to Goldenrod City. Um, just traversing. I go to a bike shop. This dude's like, hey, I'm not really selling a lot of bikes right now, so I'm just going to give you one of these for free. Mm-hmm. Just basically do some free advertising for us. And I was like, all right. And I do. Nice. And he gives me this free bike. And I was just about 
to like write down. I was like, man, I really need a bike in this game. Yeah. And here we are. Mm -hmm. Perfect time to get a bike, I say. Um, but I go, there's this like downstairs area, Christian. Right. And I go down there and there's a bunch of like trainers down there ready to battle. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I wrote a quote down here. My Pokemon just got a haircut. I'll show you how powerful it is. <laughs> Isn't that just great? I yeah. That was funny. And they threw out a Lickitung. Ugh, this thing's nasty. So Lickitung is new to you, right? Yep. Yeah, Lickitung is interesting. Um, Lickitung, I I feel like I'm neutral on Lickitung, but I feel like I should love it. Mm. You know? Because it looks I guess it's just so nasty. Yeah, I guess it falls into the Quagsire dilemma of like, again, I love Slowpoke. It's dopey, it's pink, it just looks like it's lost, and Lickitung has that going for it. But, nah, never clicked to me. I always thought it's fine, never pursue one, but. Yeah, let me tell you, it looks weirder in 3D. <laughs> I can imagine. And I'd like I'd like to not imagine, but yeah. I'm sure it is gross. Um, but I get to the end of this and there's a locked door. And even after the gym, Christian, I can't even open it. There's like nothing to do with this locked door. Mm -hmm. Does this come back later? Can I do something with this? So I think that it might be an instance of needing to find the other side of the mm. door. I see. And then it creates a shortcut, perhaps. Mm. Okay. From memory, I think that's what it is. All right. Well, we'll look into that. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also the name raider here. So if you would like to <laughs> name my Pokemon, I know where to go. $2 tier. $2 tier on Patreon. Mm -hmm. There's the game corner, which I mess around with a little bit. I mm -hmm. don't like the idea of gambling at all, especially in my sweet little Pokemon game. Yeah, Nintendo doesn't either because they take it out eventually. I, I think the game corner has one more gen left in it. I think they stopped when Gen 4 came out. I think Gen 4 is the first game with no gambling. Mm, yeah, I remember you telling me that last gen that they mm -hmm. eventually get rid of the game corner. Yeah, because I have support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't recall it in Emerald, but the remake of Red, Fire Red, that came out in Gen 3 has it for sure. So I, I just, mm -hmm. I don't know if they cut it off then or what, but. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. good decision. I don't really mess with it do you at all no not really because again similar to gen one uh the rewards don't really interest me too much so, mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah continue exploring i go to the radio tower mm -hmm. um i take a random quiz he gives me a radio card this person um i also go up to see buena she gives me a blue card uh i think she was saying like if you listen to my radio show at a certain time and like write down passwords and give them to my assistant. She and I went to her assistant. And she was like, "Oh, I have a great ball." She had some cool stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't think I was uh, playing at the right time to listen to her radio show. Sure, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I have access to the radio, so that's mm -hmm. cool now. Yeah, how do you really feel, how do you feel about the Poke Gear stuff so far? Because again, like with the calling and the radio show stuff, it's starting to kick more into gear now. But like. Do you think it's too much of a gimmick, or do you think it feels natural in just making the world feel more real? It seems more gimmicky. Mm -hmm. Right now, maybe in this gen, it seems more gimmicky, because I haven't really used it all that much. Yeah. The only thing I did was calling Elm, because mm -hmm. he told me to. Yeah. Um, and I also called my mom um, to figure out, like, I don't know if I can get money her from her from calling. I'd have to look into that. I'm not sure. Do you know? Yeah, I don't know. But uh, I haven't really used that function all that much. One thing I can tell you is that if you fight a trainer and then you talk to them again afterward, they will say, what's your Poke Gear number? Like, mm. take, my, take my number. And then I regret... I didn't do it this time, but when I tried to play Crystal before, I was like, I'll, I'll give some people the number. They call you randomly. If you're in the middle of something, you, you're dead in your tracks and you gotta listen to their little like blurb about something. No thanks. So that's annoying. But I do think that allows you to open the door up to rematches for certain trainers. Hmm. That's cool. So if you want to grind, you know, like, give somebody oh. your number. 
we'll get into grinding a little bit later, Christian. Okay. <laughs> keep on going um yeah so eventually i'm like there's really not that much to do here there's the really tall um mart pokemart there mm -hmm. uh similar to cerulean city right from gen one is that yeah. correct okay no yeah it's like that, the, or where is it cerulean was misty i think it is celadon it is celadon city you mm -hmm. are correct now is it vermilion or viridian christian i never gonna know <laughs> uh yeah there is no way to know um but at this point i'm like there's really not that much to do I, I guess i'll just oh there's also a train uh station here but i can't take a train there's no train mm -hmm. the dude there is offering to give people rides on his back seems very impractical yeah i don't know about that one uh but i just go to the gym i'm like all right let's just get through this because i guess there's really not that much to do here mm -hmm. um so i go to goldenrod city gym it is Whitney, the incredibly pretty girl. <laughs> Great descriptor. Yeah. Um, I fight uh, Beauty Victoria at first. Mm -hmm. Now, this is all fighting. Excuse me. This is all nor normal types. Yes. And I talk to the dude up front, and he's like, yeah, these are all normal types. You'll be good if you have a fighting type. And I was like, I don't, but I'm going to just try to get through this anyways. Right. So all the trainers there, pretty much no problem. Uh, Beauty Victoria throws out a uh, cent centret. Is that centret? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. She throws out three of those, and I take them out pretty much no issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Beauty Samantha throws out a couple meowths, no issue. Uh, Last Carry throws out a snubble, again no issue. Uh, Last Bridget has a couple of Jigglypuffs. At this point, my Whooper's level 15. Koaba's nice. at 20 at this point. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, then I get to Whitney, and I'm like, all right, well, I had no real difficulty at this point. Uh -huh. Whitney shows up, and she only has two Pokemon. I'm like, yeah. all right. Cakewalk, that's pretty, right? It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty easy, and it's also, like, pretty ballsy for her as a gym leader to only have two. So she throws out Clefairy. Her double, uh, Clefairy's double slap is pretty good, but for the most part, Geodude comes through, and he's my dude, mm -hmm. and he just kind of defeats her. Then Christian, Mil Miltank comes through. Yeah, she does. The Milk Mommy himself. Uh huh. Whiteout. Total. Is it? No, hold on. Is it Whiteout or Wipeout? Because I thought I read White. Whiteout. It, it's Whiteout. It's Whiteout. I don't know why. So why did they change that from Blackout to Whiteout? I don't know. I I think Blackout sounds more like. You tie that to getting drunk. You know, like I don't mm. know. I've never heard anybody say, like, oh, yeah, I waited out this weekend. Like, I, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's think true. that's a thing. No, it's not. Um, but, yeah, Mill Tank is just a milk tank. Yeah. That's really the only descriptor I can use for that. And yeah. I was like, I, there's no way to defeat this thing. Mm -hmm. That's where I was. Did you have any issues with this oh, particular yeah. Pokemon? Well, yeah, I Mill Tank is infamous whitney is infamous this is again the the lo like the time you run into this gym where your level should be how difficult whitney is with the mill tank mm. it is infamously one of the hardest gyms in the first couple gens okay well that's good to know because i had an extremely difficult time with this thing yeah it is like it is a tank it is mm -hmm. impossible. Like, roll out, you're screwed. Like, you need yeah. something with a huge defense stat, and your only bet is really chip damage. Honestly, I, like, I feel like Dunsparce might have helped you out here, but yeah, what did you do? I just whited out, and then <laughs> I was like, all right. I know, so I didn't have any fighting Pokemon. I didn't encounter any, I don't think, so I was like, I really can't use that to my advantage. Right. So I withdrew my Ghastly. Okay. Because I was like, I know normal types don't affect ghost types, mm -hmm. but also vice versa. Maybe I have, like, a normal move that I could use with Ghastly and just work that way. Didn't work. <laughs> totally didn't work. No. So that was the second time I fought her, and it totally didn't work. Um, so I'm like, what can I do here? So I explore a little bit more, and then on the fifth floor, I remember someone was saying, because I, like, went and explored, and someone was saying that if I traded an Abra... To them they would give me their machop okay who i remember from the first gen was fighting type 
Mm -hmm. The problem was Christian. I remember on, it was like the route before, um, uh, Goldenrod, that I encountered like a couple Abras. Mm -hmm. Thing was, can't catch them because they kept teleporting away. Mm Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll see what I can do here. I had a couple great balls on hand. I was like, maybe if I, I know you're supposed to weaken them before. Yeah. And, you know, that way you'd, you'd catch them easier. So I was like, all right, I'll just throw a great ball at the beginning of the fight, see what happens. First try, instant catch. Excellent. Love to see it. Yeah. So I went with my Abra and I traded him to Mike, who was the character in there, mm-hmm. for Machop. And his name is Muscle. Oh my. Which is nice. Okay. And he was level 10. And I was like, that's not leveled up enough, sir. So we're going to have to do something about that. Mm-hmm. So at this point, I'm basically just leveling up muscle. And I have a question for you here, Christian. Let's hear it. Every time I defeat a Pokemon, it says I get a boosted XP. Why is that? So I believe that Pokemon you trade level up at a faster rate. That's awesome. And I don't know if that's just for poke- like trading Pokemon to NPCs or trading Pokemon with your friends, but I think it is a it's it's definitely there are certain Pokemon that if you receive them via trade, they will level up faster. That's cool. Mhm. So don't that like yes. Yeah, so, that's nice. That's a nice little addition. It mm-hmm. significantly reduces the amount of time to level up uh Muscle, who I eventually just get him up to level 18. Nice. Cuz I'm like that'll probably do. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, Wooper is level 16, Geodude's level 18, so they're kind of all hovering around the same uh, area. Mm-hmm. So also, right, I went to... Go for it. I was going to say, so right now you still got you got Quilava, Wooper, Geodude, and now Muscle? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. And is that the um, team right now? I believe that was the team. At some point, I discard uh, my Paris mm-hmm. and also pa- polywag at some point or another i forgot gotcha. one but yeah um i'll get to the my current party at the very end okay. um because the, specifically like I, I do something to my party um okay. at the end of this gym um but i realized i went to a vending machine and there's a bunch of like options uh at the top floor or second to top floor whatever and i realized that fresh water raises hp by 50 and I'm like, that's pretty good. And mm-hmm. I know there's like lemonade and soda pop that do like 60 and 70, I think. Mm-hmm. But I was like, right now I only need 50. So I bought 12. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, what do you usually use as your like potion or water or whatever? I usually just go for potions. Um, mm-hmm. In my head, I normally, like late game, I normally just do super potions as my mm-hmm. backup and then hyper potions if I find them. Yeah. Um, I don't mess with full restores or full heal heals much, um, unless it's like the elite four and I'm and I'm prepping. Yeah. You know, I'll like just go in on like okay, selling all the stuff I don't need, buying thirty full heals, thirty four stores, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I normally it, it's just kind of what I come across, and if I really need stuff, I'll just buy some super potions. Nice. Yeah. Um, for me, I found that fresh water was nice mm-hmm. um, so for, at this point i'm just gonna keep using that um i know it was only in vending machines so i might run out and have to either backtrack or honestly i'll probably just be like oh, i'll just use potions yeah and if, if you can. remember with gen one there was that weird side quest where you needed to give a security guard water or tea i think that's um, why i bought some yeah so maybe like, hold on to, it. to use that i don't yeah. know um regardless i get my muscle up to level and I'm like, all right, let's do this again. Now I have my fighting advantage. Let's get Whitney. So I do that. She throws out her Clefairy. Instantly, Christian, I'm looking at my party. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I didn't go to the Pokemon Center before this gym. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so stupid. I'm like, oh, is there any way to back out of this? And I'm like, no. Just got to just get through it. <laughs> yeah, so I think I gave... Um, my muscle, uh, a fresh or yeah, fresh water, to just heal him up. And I was mm-hmm. like, all right, I'll take this loss and I'll just heal him up at this point. Mm-hmm. But I get through Clefairy pretty easily, and then 
the milk mommy comes out again. Squirrel outside my window I'm looking at. Um, and he faints muscle. Yeah. He defeats muscle. And I'm like, whoa, I had a, the fighting advantage and you still get me. I was a little nervous by, by that. Mm-hmm. And I'm very nervous at this point because I'm like, I don't want to white out for a third time. But my Geo dude comes in, saves the day. Because he had some pretty good defense. Like, oh. he didn't really get hurt that much. Damn. Yeah. So I win. <laughs> nice. Defeat Whitney. Did you get some damage in on Miltank with your muscle, or was it mostly I believe Geodude? I did. Okay. I believe I got some damage, but then Geodude came in and, and did what he could. Nice. Finished the fight. Yeah, it was great. What I noted here was that Whitney is a very sore loser. She's oh. immediately cried when yeah. I defeated her. I, I also think, I feel like it's implied that Whitney's, like, very young. Oh. Maybe that's from yeah, the remake that or something, but I and maybe from the anime too, but I feel like Whitney's like a teenager. Mm, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Um, but yeah, defeated her. Eventually I go back to her and she's like, oh, sorry, I'll stop crying. Here's the plane badge. Also here's strength. Also here's attract. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And then uh, Muscle learned seismic toss. Nice. Good and move. I got, yeah, I got rid of focus energy from him because yeah. I wasn't really using it all that much. Mm-hmm. I, I think focus energy is one of those that takes like multiple turns. I think it. I don't like those. I'm not I, yeah, a fan of those. There's a handful that I like, but even then, they're not super worth it ever. I agree. So this is what I was doing after the gym, Christian. This is what I was doing to my party. Okay. Um, I I was gonna ask you a question because I I got to this point in uh, milk tank or milk tank was level twenty. And I was curious, like, what level I'm supposed, what level my Pokemon are supposed to be at this point. Is mm -hmm. that even like something I should know? Like, what what level should I be around? Should it be a sliding scale each gym? Like, by each gym, I should be a certain level? Um, not necessarily. I I think a good metric for me that I try to do. I haven't really been keeping to that this gen just because of I don't have a solid team yet is usually three levels higher than the trainer Pokemon. So that would probably be like five or six higher than whatever's in the wild around me. Okay. Uh, maybe more. But I usually find myself in a gym either at or like one level below the leader's strongest Pokemon. Okay, that's good to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because at this point, I was like, I don't know if I'm underleveled, because I was trying to do more, like, parity between my Pokemon, like, in terms of leveling, because mm -hmm. I wanted everyone to be around similar levels, so. Yeah. What I did was basically just leveled every Pokemon in my party up to level 20. Nice. Good, good strategy. Yeah. yeah, so I was just, <laughs> it was, everyone was, like, pretty much up there, um... But what I was doing essentially was going to like grassy areas and fighting wild Pokemon, which mm -hmm. took a little bit, but it wasn't excruciating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I feel like in the earlier games, that's kind of part of it. It is, especially if you want to be on parity with your team, it is finding periods of time. It's like, okay, I'm going to spend like two hours grinding the whole team to get up to same level. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah. at that point, too, like, once they're all around the same, you will feel a lot better in terms of, like, swapping them out for, like, okay, this time I'll lead with Muscle, this time I'll lead with Quilava, this time I'll lead with Bellsprout. Like, leading like that, or, like, having them all at the same level makes it a lot easier, I guess, maybe on, like, a personal side of, like, balancing out who fights what battles, um, which is just good for spreading the experience at a good rate between everybody. Um... And then when it comes to bigger fights, it's like more of a matter of the type advantage at that point. Because if, say you went into uh, the fight with Whitney, everybody's level 20, you lead with muscle, right? It's like, okay, it's now more about the type advantage and maybe attack versus defense stats, you know, mm -hmm. rather than like a drastic, like, oh, in general, she's just x number of levels more powerful than me so yeah it, it takes that worry out of it 
yeah that's that's what i was figuring so i'm kind of glad i did that um and what i did at a certain point with the daycare was i gave bellsprout and i caught a jigglypuff in the wild nice and it was level 12 so i was like i'll just give the daycare my jigglypuff and bellsprout and i would do the running technique Mm -hmm. of just like on my bicycle so it was quicker um because so i hope this is true is one step with the bicycle the same as one step just walking i have no idea does that count okay i hope it is (laughs) because i was doing that because i mean obviously it's like twice as fast Mm -hmm. at least so it was just a lot quicker to do the method that i was doing yeah just basically walking one way walking back the other i think because of how they judge things in that game i think they do judge it based on distance not time you know yeah uh because like while there is a clock feature now i don't think it's able to be implemented into tracking in that manner Mm -hmm. so it probably is just distance cool well yeah it seemed to to work out so at this point christian my current party is quilava whooper these are all level 20 Mm -hmm. geodude bellsprout jigglypuff is a level 19 because i was like i don't really want (laughs) to level you up that one level whatever um and i also got the egg from the breeder so that is yet to hatch Mm -hmm. but i imagine it's similar to what happened to togepi Mm -hmm. what do you think this egg will turn into good question i don't think it will be a togepi Mm -hmm. i'd be very disappointed Mm -hmm. um i would imagine it might have to do with the surrounding area so what i mean by that is that the gym was normal types okay so maybe it's a fighting type and maybe i should have had this egg in my party a little bit earlier Mm -hmm. but yeah i don't know that's kind of my guess i'm not really sure what it could be well maybe we'll see next week maybe Um, we will but yeah because you got that you didn't get that after you didn't receive the egg from them after having Pokemon in there for a while, right? You just received the egg by talking to someone. It's like, oh, hey, do you want an egg? Here's an egg. Yeah, I got it to them. I got it from them after Whitney. So, like, after my mm-hmm. gym experience, I got gotcha. that from them. So I haven't had too much time to spend with it. Mm-hmm. So. But, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for this episode. A little bit shorter. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you're back in the groove, you know. Uh, it's... I, I think this was a good week in terms of learning the lesson about party equivalency. Um, mm. Yeah. Especially with Whitney, because I can tell you that's probably the biggest wall you're going to face until late game. Um, so now that you are at a level of parity and it seems like you're comfortable with your party right now, um, I think you're in an okay spot for the next couple gyms in terms of the pace you'll be leveling. And... Um, just be prepared that there's probably going to be one or two other times where it's like, okay, hunker down. We got to get all on the same level again. Cool. Yeah. So. I mean, that's good. To, that's good to know. And I think I'm going to be looking out along the way to capture in Bill's P- PC, at least like one type of every Pokemon, just in case I'm like, all right, I'm at this point and I need that type. Mm-hmm. I'll go grind with it and do what I need to do to have that type advantage um, in battle. Yeah. So I think that'll be good. That's a solid strategy, I think. Mm-hmm. So, um, at this point, I'm not really like the only example of me having a Pokemon based on my preferences is Wooper, because I'm like, this dude's super cute. Mm-hmm. Get out of here, Poliwag. Right. But at, at at this point, like, I'm not encountering a lot of Pokemon that I'm like, ooh, I want you over a different type of Pokemon that I currently have that occupies the same type. Mm-hmm. Do you encounter that a lot? Or, like, do you know... I, I guess at this point, you probably know where to look to find the Pokemon you want. Kind of. Like, that's another thing. Like, we're only, what, three badges in now? I still think Gen 2 doesn't open up to the new stuff for a few gyms. So I think maybe next week we should have a bit more diversity. If not, then definitely the week after. Cool. Um, because, yeah, that is, like... There's some great designs in Gen 2. There's some great Pokemon they add in, but it takes a bit to get to them. Yeah, seems like a little bit of a slow burn to yeah. get to get there. Yeah, so when you do get there, it's great. The late game stuff in Gen 2 is really good. Um, it's just, it, like, I wish it just wasn't, uh, 
a slog at the beginning to get to the new stuff um, yeah. outside of like towns and story beats and stuff like that. But yeah, um, it does. There is a lot of emphasis on on Gen One. Yeah, which which for for me is fine because like I was saying in earlier episodes, I like that sense of familiarity. But there is the sense of wanting to see the new stuff that the world of Pokemon has to offer. Yeah, and I, I think that's good. And again, like you had a year off getting into a new generation. I feel like having this is probably good for you. Like you said, it was comfortable. Mm. Um, but it's coming. I, I guarantee it's coming. <laughs> well, I'm excited. Yeah. But before we see that, Christian, where can the people follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chris N. Buckley, as well as here, youtube.com slash joyclicks, where we got several shows, including this one. Uh, Joy Clicks Games Cast, Jedi Knights as well every week uh, as well as some streams some top tens uh, those are all available on the channel but yeah very cool you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Fascinated Jack I'm going to plug the YouTube channel please so- go subscribe very close to that 2000 mark that'll be very exciting yeah. I do remember at the point like last year where you hit uh, where Joy Clicks hit a thousand yeah so almost double that by um next year so that's really cool yeah do it all right yeah Um, let's see it and again fan art right we want to give a a mini prompt a recommended font prompt not necessarily something we have to do not necessarily something you have to follow but i'm very curious i would love to see uh mill tank versus muscle (laughs) oh yes i like that Mm-hmm. We're gonna get really graphic with Mill Tank. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got all those udders. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, if you see the last Jedi, I expect that. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. And hey I really Yeah. I was gonna say, if you don't feel like drawing, Photoshop is welcome. <laughs> you can do that. Ooh. That counts. That counts as fan art. That's cool. So Yeah, um Man, Mill Tank. <laughs> gross yeah. the, the thing from star wars luke skywalker sucking on them things yeah. gross but uh it will make for some interesting fan art this mm-hmm. is really where i want the community's involvement i yeah. want i want them to draw the nastiness of mill tank because <laughs> i think that'd be hilarious mm-hmm. uh but until then we'll catch you later <laughs>